I heard someone start to clap. Let's finish that. A little bit later on in the service, we'll hear from the scripture that the rivers clapped their hands, and so that's a very appropriate reaction today. Thank you, Della Ruth. I will say what I said to the 8 a.m. service. Wow, it's good to see you. I'm so glad that you're here and that you've chosen to venture out and to worship with us at First Baptist Church Gainesville. My name is Jeremy. Uh, I'm the new pastor here at First Baptist Church, and I'm so glad to worship with you in person. I do want to extend a special greeting to those who are watching from home. Uh, we still have a lot of folks who uh, have not ventured here and cannot venture here to this place quite yet, but we want to say welcome to you. We're glad that you've joined us for this live stream worship in the satellite church of First Baptist Church Gainesville, known as your house, and so we're glad that you're worshiping with us in that location. So we're glad that you're here. Every week we will have this 11 a.m. service that you will need to make a reservation for, and I think that's pretty self-evident that you were able to do that. Uh, we will do that every week, and so if you wish to come back, you will need to call into the office this coming week to make that 11 a.m. reservation to join us for worship at First Baptist Gainesville. Earlier today, we had an 8 a.m. service outside. At 8 a.m. on the front steps and on the front lawn, we had 125 people join us for that, which for 8 a.m., some of you all made, who wasn't out of bed at 8 a.m.? You don't have to raise your hand for that. That was rhetorical. Uh, but uh, some of you may not have been out of bed yet. A couple weren't. Uh, but they were here singing, and the primary reason for that 8 a.m. outdoor service is to have um, congregational singing where the whole congregation can sing together. We will not have that option in our indoor services. All music organizations, church organizations, medical professionals have said that singing as a congregation uh, is too risky at this point. Uh, but we will have music in this service. As you have already heard, we have had beautiful music so far. We'll have that throughout the service. We will just ask you, when you hear a song that you know, and you are so tempted just to belt it out as loud as you can, belt it out in the voice of your heart, in the quietness of your heart. We want you to worship with us and to uh, hear those words, uh, not just from the stage, but also as the Spirit speaks to us this morning. So once again, we're so glad to have all of you worshiping with us today. Welcome to worship at First Baptist Church Gainesville. personal welcome and back to Della Ruth on the organ and Amy Halsey on piano. No one's happier to see them than I am or hear them play. I'm so glad you're here. We also today have Carl Beddingfield joining us on guitar and we have Rusty Jessup joining us on drums and I'm thrilled for their leadership. And then behind me we have uh, Alicia Donnell and her husband's on the opposite end, Brad Donnell and Kim Abrams and Patton Gilbert and they're going to be singing and leading our songs. Now, to echo what uh, Jeremy said, when we, we sing songs that you know, that you recognize, certainly we want you to sing them in your hearts and in your minds. And I would go one step further. If you know the tune, hum it. I think we can get away with humming. Just, just hum the tune and sing those words in your hearts and in your minds as we worship God together. They're going to begin by singing a song that um, I introduced to the congregation right after Easter. And it's a, a wonderful hymn of hope and, and celebration, Christ, our hope in life and death. Thank you. 
great God who created the heavens and the earth. We have never been more aware of our need for you and the knowledge of your presence and your faithfulness and your goodness. And so this morning we rejoice. We rejoice even though there are things that we are not happy about. We rejoice because your love, your faithfulness, and your mercy remain constant no matter what happens in the world or in our lives. We rejoice because we can gather today either in person or by radio or by the internet, and we are so connected in you. And so we pray this morning that your spirit would guide us and that this time that we have together would be a wonderful gift of praise and worship to you and to each one who participates. And we pray this in Christ's name, amen. It is such a joy to look out and to see some faces and to know that for each person that's here, there are so many others that are joining us this morning. I'm Ruth Denby, Associate Pastor for Missions, and it is my joy this morning to try to connect you a little bit closer to the many ways uh, that this church is involved in missions. And this morning, we want to turn our focus, we've been focusing quite a bit on the local needs in our community, which have been tremendous and continue to be tremendous, but I also want us to keep in mind our brothers and sisters around the world and this morning, particularly in Uganda, I have received um, a message in writing and by video from Missy Ward Angala. And our church has a particularly close relationship with the work of Missy and Francis Angala in Kampala, Uganda. They are CBF field personnel, CBF missionaries. And part of the reason that I keep bringing our attention back to these CBF field personnel is that I know the work that they do, and I know that they have been working for years and decades around the world, and they have not only been working to do their own wonderful ministries, they are working to build up local leadership and a sustainable ministry that is proclaiming the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, both in word and in Bible study, but also through these wonderful ministries that are so much like the ministries that Jesus had on earth. And so let me just tell you a little bit about the latest opportunity that Missy has shared with us. Over the last three months in Kampala, they have been on a very, very strict lockdown. No one is to go out after eight at night, and they are not to use any public transportation in fact, the only transportation and the only reason to be out has been if you are walking to the, to the grocery store or if you are on your bicycle for that. You can imagine, this is, Kampala is a huge city in Uganda, and you can imagine the restrictions that is placed on people. Missy works especially with women who have um, experienced violence and, um, and great harm and she has a shelter, and they are working there to give these women great healing psychologically and spiritually, but also to give them the skills they need to support themselves. Uganda is a country where refugees can pour in from all over the world. They do not prevent people from coming there as refugees. That's the good news. The bad news is once you get there, there are with so few resources that people are desperate. But we, here at First Baptist Church in Gainesville, Georgia, have a presence there through Missy and the work that she is doing. And so now they have been giving out food, emergency food relief, to over um, 1,800 people in the last three months. And that's wonderful that they've been able to do that. But what she really wants to do is to help the women who have had small businesses of their own to reestablish their businesses because during this time of quarantine, they have lost these businesses. Now, I've seen these women. When I say business, I'm talking about a stall on the street that sells um, 
vegetables, fruits. I'm talking about jewelry. But this is a sustainable life for them. But I want us to be involved personally. So she has asked if we can contribute uh, to this fund, whereby she will be able to give $60 microloans to these individuals who already have the business skills but just need to reestablish this because they, their businesses have been lost and all of the capital that they have has been go going into sustaining their own families. And she will not only help them get reestablished, they will be part of support groups and they will be trained in money management and in uh, saving money so that their businesses will continue to be sustainable. I love this because frankly, we have been giving emergency relief that's essential, but if all we do is give emergency food, we're not changing the picture of their lives. We're just really building more dependency. This is the kind of activity that I think is so Christ-like, and I want us to personally be involved. So what I'm asking you to do is if you are moved to help these people who, who basically support themselves on $1 a day, and who have no, no uh, checks coming from the government to help them during these times, I would love for you to go online, and if you will scroll down on the page that has the live stream after the service, you can scroll down and you will be able to look at Missy's video and it will tell you more about this. And certainly if you have questions, and I hope you do have questions, please contact me by email or you can call the church number and I would love to talk to you, but $60 of a one-time investment can truly change a family's life. And I want to ask you to do this, not because it's, it's a huge need, that's one reason, but because I think we have a need. We have a need to be more personally connected and knowledgeable about what our mission dollars are doing. And this will be a way, I think, that you will understand more of what we're doing around the world and you will truly understand more about what God is doing around the world. Thank you so much for your generous hearts. Thank you uh, that this is a church where missions is at the heart of who we are. Our next song is a Brazilian uh, folk song. It's actually in our hymnal. And it was originally, of course, in Portuguese, and it's translated in Spanish and in English in our hymnal. We want to sing it for you this time. It's based on the first verse of Psalm 98, which Pastor Jeremy will be preaching from a little later, which says, Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. <laughs> Oh, sing to the Lord, oh, sing God a new song, oh, sing to the Lord, oh, sing God a new song, oh, sing to the Lord, oh, sing God a new song, oh, sing to our God, oh, sing to our God. For God is the Lord. Done wonders for God is the Lord, and God has done wonders for God is the Lord, and God has done wonders. So oh, sing to our God, oh sing to our God. For Jesus is Lord. Amen. Alleluia. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Alleluia. For Jesus is Lord. Amen. Alleluia. Oh, sing to our God. Oh, sing to our God. Oh, sing to the Lord. Oh, sing God a new song. Oh, sing to the Lord.
this time we have a trio of young ladies coming to sing for us. Uh, all three of these young ladies are high school students. They sing in our Sunlight Youth Choir. And this was actually a song that we were learning to plan to sing on our choir tour this summer if we could have done that. But we have, um, coming up on my side here is Anna Catherine Brewer. She's a rising senior at North Hall High School. And then standing in the center is Sydney Baker. She's a rising senior at Gainesville High School. And then on the other side is Dawson Deal, and she is a rising 10th uh, grader at North Hall High School. They're going to sing Lauren Daigle's song called You Say.
Thank you, Sydney, Dawson, Anna Catherine, for enhancing our worship today. I think I speak on behalf of our worship leaders. You know, since March, we have been recording worship services to an empty sanctuary. It is so good to see your faces. Even though they're masks, it's so good to see your faces and your smiles. And I know you're grateful to be here. And for those of you who continue to worship with us by way of your devices or radio, uh, we're grateful that you're participating as well. I tried to find a, an appropriate verse for gathering together, and none better in Acts chapter 2, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. It is good to be all together again. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, what a joy it is to be back in this building that means so much to us. We are so grateful that your spirit is with us today as we gather. And even though there are no handshakes or hugs as in the past, we can rejoice that our hearts are bonded together, agreeing on our purpose here, that is to praise you and to serve you. We pray for those who are unable to be with us today physically, for those seeing or hearing from a distance, would you also indwell in their hearts and homes today? We continue to pray for those who suffer as a result of the pandemic, those suffering physically and emotionally, spiritually. May today's worship experience be the encouragement that they need to press on. We pray for your guidance as we strive to be your church, your people. May we be ever more committed to following your plan in our daily lives and in the lives of this, your church. Teach us today. Teach us as we hear from your message from Pastor Jeremy. Thank you again for allowing us to be together once more as we worship and together we pledge our loyalty to you by saying together and believing the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> matters 
us when we're through is how we love. Faced with what we lack, some things fall apart. But from the ashes, new dreams start. All that matters to the heart is how Today's Old Testament reading and focus passage is Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song, because he has done wonderful things. His own strong hand and his own holy arm have won the victory. The Lord has made his salvation widely known. He has revealed his righteousness in the eyes of all the nations. God has remembered his loyal love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. Every corner of the earth has seen God's salvation. Shout triumphantly to the Lord, all the earth. Be happy, rejoice out loud, sing your praises. Sing your praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of music, with trumpets and a horn blast. Shout triumphantly before the Lord, the King. Let the sea and everything in it roar, the world and all its inhabitants too. Let all the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains rejoice out loud together before the Lord, because he is coming to establish justice. 
in the world. He will establish justice on the earth rightly. He will establish justice among all people fairly. Well, about this time every year, for as long as I can remember, I've taken some kind of a family trip. We actually went out of town last week, but I remember doing that all the years growing up as well. And before every trip, when I had the capability, I would make myself my own Songs of Summer playlist. I would make that on a tape for a few years, and then CDs came out, and so I put them on a CDs. We don't really use those anymore, do we? But uh, I'd make those Songs of Summer my own. I would make my own list, and I would listen to them. But of course, I didn't have to make my own playlist. I didn't have to make my own mix. The radio plays the Songs of Summer every year, if you turn on to popular radio. Fifty years ago, in the year 1970, Yes, 1970 was 50 years ago. Here were the top five songs of summer. Mama Told Me Not to Come by Three Dog Night. The Love You Save, I Found That Girl by The Jackson Five. Ball of Confusion, That's What the World Is Today by The Temptations. Ride Captain Ride by Blues Image and Band of Gold by Frida Payne. Anybody recognize those songs? I actually recognize those songs more than the songs of summer for 2020. Here are the top five songs of 2020 summer. Number one, rock star, Da Baby featuring Roddy Rich. What's Poppin', Jack Harlow featuring Da Baby, Tony Linez and Lil Wayne. Blinding Lights by The Weeknd, Savage by Megan The Stallion. Am I, Megan The Stallion, am I saying that right? Uh, featuring Beyonce, and then Roses by St. John. So there you go. If you're interested in today's songs of summer, go turn on the radio. You'll hear some of those songs. Um, but those are the songs of summer. I made my own compilation when I was young, uh, but today, of course, you can turn on the radio and you can hear those songs of summer. As we enter into this new sermon series and worship series on the Psalms, think of the next few weeks as a compilation of different songs. And with compilations of the summer, there's all kinds of different moods and subjects of the song, right? So all the songs that we just heard about, they weren't all the same subject. They had different topics, different things to, to think about. For instance, these songs speak to joy. They speak to anger and to sadness, to hope and to happiness, to uncertainty, to doubt, to despair. Guess what? The Psalms do the same. The Psalms are one of the most diverse collections of writing in all of Scripture. And it spans various seasons in the psalmist's life, it speaks to different life situations and circumstances of the people of Israel, and in the process reveals the truth about God and humanity. So every week we'll hear various psalms each week, and they'll be a little bit different, different categories from one week to the next. Today we are hearing a psalm of praise, as Psalm 98 is. In two weeks we will read a psalm of lament. It will be more of a somber, sad feel. In a few weeks we'll hear psalms of wisdom and earthly kingship and the covenant community. The Psalms tell a diverse story, don't they? They tell a diverse story of David or the psalmist and God's people. And so we'll consider those Psalms under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And I believe that we will be struck with how these Old Testament words find true fulfillment in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I believe that in hearing these Psalms and internalizing their words as followers of Christ, we'll find renewal after a very intense four months, these past four months have in many ways been like a compilation of my moods. The past four months I've been sad, I've been angry, I've been happy, I've been joyous all across the board. And thank goodness we have the Psalms that we can read that can help us learn about what that looks like in light of who God is and what God continues to do for us. And so today, like a good album, we'll start out on a high note. An upbeat note, a psalm of praise. Psalm 98 is a psalm of praise. It is also called an enthronement psalm because it ascribes sovereignty and lordship to God. 
This is the psalm type that we probably hear the most of in worship. So if we're preaching on any other text, maybe a gospel text or an epistle text, we still might hear a reading from a psalm, and it is usually a psalm of praise or an enthronement psalm. For instance, Psalm 8, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Psalm of praise. Psalm 66, shout for joy, all the earth. Psalm 150, praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in the mighty heavens. These are all psalms of praise that you are likely familiar with. So Psalm 98 begins in a very similar fashion. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. This is the theme throughout these first few verses. They recount and remind God's people that God is Faithful, that God has achieved victory, that God has shown vindication, that God remembers his love and steadfastness with the people Israel. It's the insistence that God has been at work all along. So Israel's history was not easy peasy all along the way. There were times that they most likely wondered where God was. They said to themselves, is God at work here? Is God truly with us? Especially when they were slaves in Egypt and they were wandering in the desert. Is God with us? And the Psalms say, yes, God has been with us. God has been with you the whole time, working towards victory and salvation. And in the second portion of the Psalms, the people are instructed to make a joyful noise and to shout triumphantly. And they are to do so not just with song, but with instruments, with the lyre, the harp, and the trumpets, and the horns. These few verses are, in essence, a call to worship. God's people are summoned to participate in the praise that is spoken of. Praise is more than a concept or mood, isn't it? Praise is action. Praise is using your voice and your hands to worship God. I remember a couple of years ago, one of my first Doctor of Ministry seminars, we were, we were called to our worship class, and we were supposed to take just a few sentences to talk about what worship really is. And so naturally, all of us pastors, <laughs> we knew that. <laughs> we knew how to answer that question. Well, worship is when you, you, you come into a sanctuary, you sing hymns, you pray, you read from the Bible, you preach, you have a greeting time, or at least, at least then you had a greeting time. We'll have a greeting time again at some point. My professor was quick to remind us, yeah, those, those are a part of worship, for sure. But you forgot one important aspect. Worship is not initiated by you, pastor. Worship is not initiated by your congregation. Worship is an invitation from the Lord of hosts to enter his presence, to make yourself lesser than, and to direct, direct all of your attention to God. To acknowledge that God is with us and to praise God in this space. That, that is worship. It is truly a response. We didn't invent worship. God has summoned us and called us to worship, and so we respond. And so this scripture, as I see it, is less of a command to worship. It is more of an invitation to all of us. God invites us to be creative in God's presence. God invites us to be far-reaching and beautiful and to offer excellent praise in his presence because of what he has done. And so the question becomes, how will we respond? In light of all God has done for us, in light of God, what God is doing amongst us right now, and in light of where God is taking us in the future, how will we respond? One of the reasons we started an 8 a.m. outdoor singing service, which you missed by about three hours, but that's okay, we're glad you're here, is to provide an option and an opportunity to make a joyful noise with our collective voice. I know this setup that we have now is far from ideal sitting six feet apart from each other in this worship space, wearing masks, not singing together as a congregation. That is far from ideal. Trust me, I understand. 
But I believe God wishes for us to do what we can do to protect those around us. Even so, a few weeks ago, when the studies started coming in and they said congregations shouldn't sing together, Mark and the rest of us were like, oh boy, what are we going to do? We cannot imagine holding a worship service without music or singing. And so one of the options that came out of that discerning was to host a worship service outside every week at 8 a.m. as weather permitted. So this morning at 8 a.m. we sang, Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. We sang, Majesty, worship His majesty. Unto Jesus be all glory, honor, and praise. We sang that in several other hymns this morning we found wholeness and fulfillment and at this point you may be wondering jeremy what does that make us because here we are sitting in this space and we can't sing together you may be wondering what are we supposed to do well just as a reminder we have still used the voices of our hearts the work of our hands and have heard several musicians lead us in music today. We were never going to hold a worship service that didn't have music. That was not an option for us as far as we were concerned. But even so, without congregational singing, we still heard this morning and echoed in our hearts, Christ is our hope in life and death. We heard all creatures of our God and King lift up your voices. We heard young people sing, You Say, which is about God's love for us. Kim sang, How We Love. We did not cease praising through song and music today. We're certainly not giving up on singing music and praising God, even if it's going to look different for a season. On that note, on that note, even more, in this service, we're going to lean a little bit more into God's instruction to what? To use the instruments, right? Right? So we won't have as many instruments at our 8 a.m. service, but in this service, we will work to do that every week. We will have various kinds of instrumentation in this service because God invites us to use the instruments. Yes, to use our voice, but also to use the harp or the horn or whatever instrument we have. We're going to lean more into that at our 11 a.m. service. And I think that will help us focus on the second part of the psalm, that tells us that we can worship God with whatever we have. If we can't use our voice, then we'll find something else to worship God, won't we? I once read that instruments are symbols of the best human culture has to offer. So as much as I love my iPhone, and I love the internet, I love airplanes, I love cars, and I love a Roomba, Musical instruments will always be at the top of what we've created and what God has inspired us to create and use to glorify Him. They give us an opportunity to praise God with the very best of what our culture has created and will have to offer. So we'll praise God with song, but we'll also praise God with the harp and the trumpets and the horns. We'll use the organ, the piano, the drums, the guitar, and whatever other instrument comes our way. Even without congregational singing, we will offer our best to God. And as we move into the concluding words of this text, we notice the expansiveness and participation in the praise of God. So what began as one group or one select group of individuals or a small nation finds its way outward. The influence of God expands. The praise of God expands. And not just through people, but even the land and the mountains and the seas cry out in praise. All the earth, all that dwell on the earth, all that dwell in the sea will praise God. This justice and salvation and deliverance that this tiny nation of Israel experienced would find its way to the furthest corners of the earth. Now that's an exciting idea, isn't it? It's not going to stay in a small assembly. It finds its way outside these walls, outside these city limits, outside this state and country. It reaches the farthest corners of the earth. And the final words of the psalm speak of justice multiple times. 
You might be thinking to yourself, well, that's an interesting change of subject to speak of praise and then to change the subject to justice. There's no change in subject, folks. There is a natural progression from an outflow of praise to God's justice being established over all the earth. The final words of the psalm speak of a forthcoming justice. In other words, what we've experienced in Jesus Christ must be taken to the ends of the earth. It is too grand, too majestic for us to keep to ourselves. The psalms are starting to sound a bit gospel-y, aren't they? A little earlier we talked about worship and praise being a response showing us the indisputable link between praising God and doing God's work in the world. Our response to who God is and what God is doing is necessarily the praise that we have voiced in this place. But the outflow of that praise and the acknowledgement of that goodness is action with our hands and feet, or what we call mission. In Paul's letter to the, to the Colossians, we read, Teach each other in Christ by singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing to God with gratitude in your heart. That's what we've been doing this morning. Whatever you do, whether in speech or action, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And so even Paul, to the early church, recognizes this link between our singing and our saying of the psalms and the spiritual music in this place and the link to our speech and our action as we go forth from this place. Here's the takeaway. Our praise in this place or at any part in our life is incomplete if we are not fulfilling that second part of the psalm, isn't it? It would be inconsistent, and I would even argue hypocritical or sinful, if we gather here in this place today... Hear this psalm, sing hymns or play hymns or hear hymns together and sing these spiritual songs and not commit to the very justice that is spoken of at the end of Psalm 98. We can't put a split in the scripture and put justice over here and praise over here. They're a part of the same hymn. They're a part of the same psalm. They're a part of the same story. Colossians 3 says our praise inevitably leads to justice, compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Being the hands and feet of Jesus is the praise of God. It's God's invitation for us to join in the redemption of all creation. First Baptist Church, you are invited to take part in that work not just in this space, but as your praise continues the rest of the week. It is my prayer that as we prepare to leave today, because of our commitment to praise, we would be more inclined to work for justice, working for all human dignity and flourishing in the sacredness of life, the defeat of exploitation and abuse and oppression and disease and malnutrition in our world, that is the work of Christ that we are set on today in our praise. A.W. Tozer said, We must never rest until everything inside us worships God. And may it be so. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for this psalm of praise. We thank you for inviting us to worship you and to praise you. And we acknowledge today that this praise does not cease at the end of this worship hour, but it continues on in our action and in our work for justice in this world. When we are unsure of where to go next, may we look to the Prince of Peace to know how to work for justice. May we look at his life his sacrificial death and hopeful resurrection as the model for how we will go forward as individuals and as a church in taking the name of Jesus to the ends of the earth. And we thank you for inviting us to praise you and to take part 
in that spiritual work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we are so glad that you worshiped with us today. At this time, or around this time in the service, we would normally offer an invitation. And because of our limitations, we will not do that, so to say. But we still want you to know that God's invitation is always open. You do not have to spend this hour responding to God. God's invitation is always open. And so if you feel led of God's Spirit to become a Christian and be baptized, please give us a call or see one of the ministers after the service. We'd love to speak with you about that. If you wish to unite with this church... Uh, please call the office or once again talk to one of the ministers. We'd love to have you join us at First Baptist Church Gainesville. And of course, if you feel led to enter into any kind of Christian ministry or service, by all means, contact us today or at the church office. We'd love to talk with you about that. Just a couple of notes before you will be dismissed today. Uh, first of all, uh, we hope that you will come back next week for our 8 a.m. service or our 11 a.m. service. If you do plan on coming back for the 11, know that you need to make reservations every week. Um, so you will need to call back to the office starting tomorrow to reserve your place for worship. We also want to let you know that we do have offering baskets located at the exits. And so know that for the next, you know, as long as this lasts, we will probably not be passing plates for some time. But we want to give you the opportunity to worship God through your gifts and offerings, which we greatly appreciate. Those baskets will be available as you head out today. You can also give online or drop it in the secure drop box outside under the portico as well. The last instruction I'll give is that as we exit today, please do so orderly. Please remain six feet apart. We ask that you not stay and linger in the sanctuary. You need to find your way out um, orderly, spaced apart. Once you get outside, I don't care what you do. What? I do care what you do, but you, you know what I mean. Like, you just, you know, do what you want to do once you get outside. We're not going to be watching at that point. Uh, but in here, we ask that you move towards the exits. Most of you came in uh, the front doors of the sanctuary. Know that this door will be open as well. You can exit out this way as well and try to spread yourselves out as much as you can. So now hear this benediction, and then we'll be dismissed. As you have received the seeds of faith and hope, go now into God's world to scatter the seeds of reconciliation and peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.